What are constraints? How are they used? Constraints are used to control, reference, verify, and restrict. Restrict. By restrict, we mean a value is allowed to only be certain values. By verify, we can check something. By reference, it means we cross-reference between different items. There are different levels of constraints. Constraints can be column level, sometimes called inline, and table level, sometimes called out of line. Column level constraints are constraints that are attached to individual columns within a table. A table level constraint is attached to the table as a whole. What are the types of constraints? The first one is a not null constraint. A not null constraint is applied to a column and it forces the column to have a value entered. What this means is that when you add a value or row to a table where a column is not nullable, then there must be a value inserted. The only exception to this is when there's a default clause, which will place a value into that column with the default value, and the not null constraint will not necessarily be triggered if it was not added into an insert statement. A unique constraint. A unique constraint forces uniqueness on the value in a column across a whole table. In other words, if you were to add a record to a customer table and you had a unique constraint on, say, the customer's name, you would not be able to enter two customers with the same name or the same customer twice. A check constraint is a validation or verification constraint. It checks a value. For instance, you could check to see whether a state entry exists in a list of states. A primary key constraint. This is referential integrity and normalization. The primary key defines an index which is unique to start with. Secondly, it also defines a unique value for a particular object which is referenceable by other subset or child entities. The foreign key is a key field contained in a child entity which is referenced by a primary key in a parent entity. A reference constraint is an object pointer reference to another object. Primary and foreign key constraints. Primary and foreign key constraints are used to validate the referential integrity of a database. What is referen mistake? What is referential integrity? Referential integrity is the validity or correctness of the relationships between the primary and foreign keys. In other words, if you look at your concert schema here, the category and the show have a one-to-many or zero relationship. What this means is that shows cannot exist without categories, but categories can exist without shows. And there are many shows to every single category. The referential integrity rules will maintain this relationship such that if someone attempts to delete a category which is referenced by a show, it will not be allowed. The same should also apply to update commands. Additionally, an insert on a show record with a category that doesn't exist will not be allowed, although since this is a zero, a one-to-many or zero relationship, it is possible to create a show record without a category ID since this variable is potentially nullable. In a situation where you have a one to many and not zero, this object must exist, and this object must exist on both sides of the relationship for any rows to exist in either. Thus, the referential integrity is applied more strictly between the price and ticket than between the category and show tables. There is an option on the delete command called cascade. What this will allow you to do is if you try to delete a category record and entries exist in the show table, it will also delete the records from the show table containing that category ID. Same applies to child tables of the show table. It's very dangerous using the cascade command on a delete command. Be very careful. So the primary key is placed in a parent table. Here we can see an example of a division within a company, multiple departments within that division, where there's a foreign key placed in the department table which references the division table. The department 
does not have to exist for a division. In other words, you could have a division without any departments. This doesn't necessarily make sense, but it depends on the company. The department table, again, has a primary key as a department ID, which is placed into the employee table as a foreign key, which means an employee has to be part of the department. But you don't necessarily have to have any employees to have department entries. The foreign key in the child table. Once again, primary key in the parent table, division ID, department ID, employee ID. Foreign key in the child table, division ID and department ID.